All right, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Learn to Code React Single Page Application. Uh, we are going to get started in a moment. I uh, want to go over today's agenda and I want to make sure I'm recording. I am. All right. Perfect. Let's get started. So today we are going to learn the most boring thing in programming, and it is going to be a lot of difficult syntax to remember. It is going to be a lot of nonsensical things that will be amorphous, and it will not make any sense at all, but somehow I am going to try and make sense of it so that when we start doing actual React next week, this will hopefully all make sense. But today is really going to be probably one of the more frustrating lessons or the most frustrating topics because learning a particular programming language directly without any context or learning anything without any real context is very difficult. And the reason JavaScript today doesn't really have context is because I'm going to teach the basics of the language, like variables and math functions and arrays and dictionaries and functions. And that's like, wait, why are we learning all of this? Because it applies when we start to actually plug into React. Now, I'm going to try to keep it so that we just focus on the components that are appropriate for React. So hopefully it will make more sense. Uh, today, I am going to be referencing the student section of our course. So I'm gonna post this in the chat and hopefully uh, this will be something that you can reference while we are uh, going through it. And feel free to either type along with me or, uh, just listen and take in what you can. If you have questions, feel free to ask. So with that, we're gonna to go to the student section and we are going to go to JavaScript and we are going to start with the basics. And this is a lot of reading. Ah, why are we reading all of this? So I'm not gonna read this for you, but instead we are going to uh, go into the browser, and in the browser itself, we're going to see how we can apply all of this. So first and foremost, we're going to go to our cheat sheet, and in here, we're not going to focus too much on the actual code here, but we are going to go to View, Developer, and Developer Tools. And we're going to go over a few things in our Developer Tools. I'm going to hide this. It doesn't really have a whole lot of use today. And it doesn't matter what website you're on, doesn't matter where you are, you can either be on a URL, you can be anywhere else, but inside of our view and developer tools, we're gonna go to this little console and we're gonna type on console. And inside console, just to see if this works, I'm gonna type in uh, console.log, and this is a terrible syntax, but we are going to, type in console log and with these parentheses, this is what we're going to do. We are going to type in quotes, hello, and just hit enter. And we get this weird output here, hello, and we get this undefined. Don't worry about the undefined, we'll talk about it later, but hey, we got this word hello to print automatically and on this sort of line here. Don't know what's going on with it. When I click on it, it brings me here to this console style sheet, but not quite. It brings me here to this thing. So I'm going to talk about what all of this stuff is. But first and foremost, I want to go over what we just did. We just really said, are we connected to the console correctly? Are we connected to the browser correctly? And are we able to type in JavaScript and make it work? And the answer to that is yes. So just a note to those that are joining, feel free to ask questions, feel free to interact. Today, we are going over JavaScript. We are going over the boring stuff of JavaScript, which is the variables, console log, how to print. Uh, we'll go over arrays and dictionaries and functions and classes. Today's gonna be a very boring day because JavaScript is a pretty boring language. 
but it will be useful before we connect to React in general. Uh, I am referencing a lot of what this or what is on this page. And to get here, I'm going to post that in the chat. So if you go to the chat, you should be able to see that there is a uh, React link in here. And inside the React link, that will take you to the React page that I'm on right now. And to get to here specifically, you're going to go to student section. And inside the student section, there is JavaScript. And inside JavaScript, we're going over the basics. And all I've done so far is go over the console log, the hello, and that's it. Now, we don't know what console is. We don't know what log is. We hopefully know what hello is, but uh, I'm gonna walk through what we just did. So in JavaScript, if I want to get something to print to this console, uh, the idea of a console is this back end tool that can help me see what's going on in detail. I can print out this thing called console log.hello. And this really isn't meant to be understood, but just really meant to be a way for me to understand, am I connected to the console correctly? Am I connected to the browser in a way that I can type in JavaScript? And the answer to that would be, yes, I am connected to the browser. Now, we're going to be working with web pages. So how about I take this over to a web page and take this, uh, connect those two together? So we're in the console. How do I get this to a web page? Now, I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code. And hopefully you all have Visual Studio Code installed and I'm gonna share out my screen. So you have Visual Studio Code here. Hopefully you can see this. Um, if you cannot see Visual Studio Code, let me know and type it in the chat and I'll see if my sharing can be updated or I'll have to reshare it, but hopefully you can see this. And I'm gonna open a folder and the folder is going to be called Learn to Code. And it's kind of one of the folders we've been working on uh, for the past few weeks and I've created a folder called week five. And there's nothing at all in week five. So week five is completely empty, doesn't have anything. And in here, I am going to put first js file.js. So it's very important that the file name is .js. Actually, take that back. I'm skipping ahead. I was going to tell you how to do this in HTML or in a web page. So screw this first JS file. I'm going to just type in index.html. Let's just do index.html and we're good. Okay. So in index.html, what we learned is we're going to type in our HTML boilerplate data. And so I've got all my boilerplate data here. And inside of here, just to make sure we are connected properly, I'm just going to save this. And it's called index.html in week five. So I'm going to go into the browser. And again, I'm going to open a file in the browser. And I'm going to go back to the desktop and week five and index.html. Open this up. And oh, lo and behold, we have our word hello here. Cool. So we're connected. Things are working. We have a file in Visual Studio Code. We typed in hello. And we put it to the browser. So hopefully all of this is review. We've done this before. Now I'm going to open up the developer tools in here. And I'm not going to open up the developer tools to do anything in here, but I am going to open up the developer tools so we see what's going on. Inside of my browser or inside index.html, I'm going to type in script. And inside script, I'm going to type in that same console.log and I'm going to type in hello. And I'm going to come back to our main web page. I'm going to hit refresh. And what is going on here? I have hello, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this text just to make it a little more obvious. You're gonna see hello world a lot. It's just a way to verify things are working. So I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna refresh again. And here we have the word hello in lowercase h. Here's our lowercase word hello. But why isn't console log showing up here on the web page? Shouldn't it show up here on the web page? But wait, it shows up in this word called console, in this tab called console, and it's hello world. We typed hello world here on our Visual Studio Code inside of this special keyword script. We've seen this a bit before when we typed in our link to our CSS. When we type this up here, we don't really see anything in the browser, yet we see the effect 
of it. That's exactly what we're seeing in the script. So nothing in here will actually show up on the web page. What will happen, if I can type in page correctly, what will happen is the output will show up on the console. Oh, the console is located inside of developer tools. Cool. So hopefully this is making sense. If not, feel free to ask questions, but this is hopefully an easy way to see text inside of a browser. And then this JavaScript down here. Now, what is JavaScript? Okay, so console.log, JavaScript, if I can type today, is a programming language. Console.log, this will get highly repetitive, uh, just so we belabor the point and make sure we know it. Uh, JavaScript is a programming language, which means there is logic, like, if, then, or in this specific case for JavaScript, if, else. And that means we also have math. We can also do math. We can have functions. And we also have object-oriented programming. Uh, we can also do OOP, otherwise known as object-oriented programming. Now, why did I type all of this stuff in the console log? Because I want to show you when we come over to the web page and we refresh, whoa, OK, console log, hello world. JavaScript is a programming language, which means there is logic, like if else, we can also do math. We can have functions. We can also do object-oriented programming. So all of this is available to us in JavaScript. And JavaScript is really powerful because it's the first time we have a programming language that can integrate into the browser directly. In the past, Programming languages were all in the back end. They couldn't do anything on the front end. It was really hard to get a programming language to talk to a web page, but JavaScript has bridged that gap. So now we can have things that run on the back end, like JavaScript, and have it interact with the browser. That's what makes it so unique. All right. You're probably wondering, what is this get? error file not found stuff going on here. So up top, I did add this style sheet. And so we don't have a style CSS, but I'm going to get rid of this because it's not important for today. So if I clear that out and I refresh, hey, it goes away. So here's our hello world. Here's our JavaScript info. And so let's go back here. And this is kind of what I'm trying to summarize. You'll learn a little bit more. But if you want to see more in detail, you can go ahead and read this. Um, like I said, it can run directly in the browser, and most all browsers support it directly, which is what makes it so powerful. Uh, we've been exploring the developer tools. So view developer, developer tools, same in Mozilla. And then we just introduced the script idea. I'm going to talk about later on how to run uh, file names directly. And I probably have a typo here that I'm going to want to fix because it's not .py, it's .js. So I've got to fix that later on. But the idea is we can run Node if we want to run it locally on our computers. And if you haven't already, what I am going to recommend is getting Node.js. And if you just type into Google Node.js, you'll come up to Node.js.org. And on this site, you'll be able to download the latest version of Node.js. So Node.js allows you to run files directly on the back end when we start getting into the actual full stack development, when we start getting into databases, API calls, backend integration, we're going to need Node.js to run those components. All right. Now, also, Node.js to run React. Totally forgot. 
So we're going to start using Node.js next week. So as early as next week. So highly recommend downloading this because you will need it for React as well. Um, we don't require it today, but it will be useful if you have it. So just wanted to introduce this. So all right, what's up next on our little cheat sheet here for learning uh, JavaScript? Variables. What are variables and why do I need them? So variables help us store data. Right now, all I've done is type out hello world, a whole bunch of console log stuff, but I haven't really done anything. And what is it that I want to do? Well, it's very, very subjective. Uh, today, let's just say I want to add a few numbers and do some math. I'm really boring and just want to add a few numbers together. All right. Let's see how we do that. In our console, we can do five plus five. Let's just see what happens. And in the script, when we come back here, I just want to add five plus five. I'm going to refresh and nothing happens. Wait a minute. Why does nothing happen? I typed in five plus five. Well, let's just do console.log because I want some output. Five plus five. All right. So now we refresh. Hey, we get the number 10. Pretty awesome. JavaScript can do math. Okay, good enough. But what if I want to have variables? What if I want to have dynamic? What if I want to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit or back and forth? So I'm going to have to create some variables for that. So let's just say in this example, we're going to do var is short for variable A equals 5. Var B equals five. And now in my console.log, I can do, uh, if I can type these correctly, A plus B. Save that. Refresh up here and I get 10 again. Okay, cool. And how do I know it's coming from here? Well, I can do one of two things. I can either type in here numeric five plus five, Uh, or I can look at the console log line indicator to tell me where it is. So oops, I probably want to save this and then refresh. And then numeric 5 plus 5 equals 10. This will be variable 5 plus 5 equals 10. 5 plus 5 or variable A plus B equals. There we go. Ah, that's in the wrong place. Okay. So let's refresh and I get this variable A plus B equals 10. Awesome. I can also look at the line numbers to tell me where it's at. Okay. So far, really, really basic, easy stuff. Nothing too complicated. If you are wondering about math and how it works, there's this sort of famous uh, acronym that I grew up with called P-E-M-D-A-S, which basically means parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, add, subtract. This is the order of operations that JavaScript will follow. Um, this is also the order of operations we generally follow for math. All right, so inside of this, now let's say we want to create a tip calculator, something really, really simple. I go to a restaurant. Typically, I'm going to do this math in my head. I don't need a calculator, but just in case, uh, I'm going to create a tip calculator. And my bill is $100 in this case. Uh, and I have to leave a, oh, I'll put this on the next line. Oh. And I have to leave a 20% tip, 20% tip. There's a few ways to do this. So we're going to start off with a pretty easy way. And we're going to create a var for my bill equals 100. Now notice in here, 
before we did var a, var b, really, really simple. But now we're getting a little more complicated with our variables. And in JavaScript, you will see this thing here where the first letter is always lowercase, but then every word after is uppercase. So if I wanted to make this uh, a longer variable, every letter uh, will have a uppercase to it. So this is what's called camel case. So if we look here in the notes, I believe we call out camel case here. Example variable, this is an example of a variable in camel case because we have the lowercase e here and the uppercase v here. So this is two separate words, example variable. So we will generally have a, we generally don't want, what we do not want is just my bill. Whoops. We don't want this this is, it'll work, no problem. But when we work with other people, they are going to look at this and say, hey, this is trash. This is ugly. Stop using this. This is a wrong way to do coding. Uh, the more correct way is this way. So just be careful. It'll work both ways, but just be careful. So var my bill. So now I want to have a total. So, well, I can do var, sorry, my tip, and that equals 20. So now we can do one of two things. We can either keep the tip as 20 or 0.2. I'm going to make this simple and go 0 0.20, just to keep it simple. Uh, now in my final var total, uh, total bill, we're going to do my bill times one plus 0 0.20. All right, and we'll do a console.log and we'll see what total bill comes out to be. And in here, going back to our site and we do a refresh, my total bill is $100.20. If I'm supposed to leave 20%, if you're at all mathematically inclined, you're probably pulling your hair out saying, oh, why is it 120 cents? It should be 120. Fix this, this is terrible. So that's why I wanna show the order of operations because it is somewhat important. This is wrong. So I'm gonna comment that out and really it should be var total bill equals my bill times one plus 0 0.20. Or why am I using 0 0.20? I can use my tip. Um, or if I didn't want to do the one plus there, I can always change this to 1.2 and just get rid of the whole thing. But I really want to belabor the point of parentheses in this case. I really wanted to show just that component there. And now we're going to go to a refresh and we've changed it to 120. That looks a lot better. 20% tip on a $100 bill is $120. So the power of parentheses just emphasize we're getting into programming language. Okay, now we have a math idea of what's happening. Now, if we wanted to have certain outputs based on the total bill, tip not enough, tip enough, tip more, or tip too much, we can set up parameters. We can set up if else statements. So if total bill, wait a minute, there's a problem here. Already it's giving me an error. So what's my syntax for if? Actually, let me do this. If total bill is over or is under uh, 120, throw an error. Uh, console not enough, maybe, I don't know. Print not enough. If total bill is at or is uh, between 115 and 120, I should change this up, 125, uh, below 115, there we go. I should have thought about this before. Uh, print okay. 
And then if total bill is over 125, print too much. Okay, so how are we gonna do these if statements? So if total bill is less than 115, then we're going to console.log uh, not enough. Except we have a problem here on our syntax. So JavaScript is very finicky and very weird, but I'm gonna get rid of those real quick and I'm just gonna type this in and we're gonna change this total bill value, my tip. I'm gonna change that to a value of, let's just say 10% to make this work. All right, so I'm gonna refresh here and oh no, we've got our first error. Ah, what do I, what do, I do? It's all red, it's not working. It doesn't give me what I want. Syntax error, unidentified, unexpected identifier, total bill at. This is a terrible error and it doesn't tell me anything at all. It doesn't tell me how to fix it. It doesn't tell me what the problem is. It doesn't tell me what my suggested solution is. Error checking is terrible in programming. It is so vague, it is so frustrating, and it drives people crazy, myself included. I hate this kind of error. Tell me what I'm doing wrong and I, I'll fix it. In here, because the syntax is so finicky and so specific, we do need to surround this with a regular parenthesis. This is a regular parenthesis. Now, these two guys right here, this one and this one, oh, these are the squiggly parentheses or what are called brackets. So we've got bracket notation here for the if statement. So I'm gonna go over this again. If parenthesis and then bracket. So inside the if is our condition. So this is our condition to be met. And inside here is what happens when the condition is met. So we're getting into if then logic here. So I'm gonna comment that out and I'm gonna change this to if total bill is less than 115 console.log to middle of a tip. Okay, let's see what happens. We're gonna refresh and hey, we get this to middle of a tip. Okay, wait a minute. I, I see all this, I see it's all working. Yeah, we're going one by one by one. Uh, but what I don't get is how JavaScript kind of works. How does it know to come down and read this and read this and read this and read this? Well, that's a great question. I think in here, what we're gonna cover is that JavaScript is a top-down language. Every single command you type in here will get evaluated. And so I kind of have to know my code pretty well because if I have an error, let's say up here on line 21, I get rid of that parenthesis and I go ahead and save this. Now inside of my console or inside of my text editor or IDE, I have these errors that pop up. I have these squiggles just like in like a word or a word document, these squiggles pop up. There's a problem here. There's a red line here. There's a few red sort of dots here that indicate to me there's a problem. Even up here, there's a visualization of there's a red here, so there's a problem. But just, let's just say we ignore all of that. Let's just say we're not paying attention to it and we miss a parenthesis here. And I come back here and I hit refresh. Oh, nothing is working. And then we have this really actually informative error for the first time in a long time. Hey, syntax, missing closing parenthesis after argument list at where index HTML 21. And then this one breaks it down even further at index character marker 17. So index.html, the line is 21 and the character marker is 17. So what does that mean? If we come back here, this will be at the 17th character in this line of characters here. So now we pop that back in, we save it and now we refresh and there we go. We have our content back. So today is kind of gonna be a bit of a boring day trying to understand errors and trying to understand basic JavaScript. But now we wanna know, okay, if the tip was 
better than or if it was in the appropriate range. So we do a elif or else if and or whoops. Uh, else if. Yeah, there we go. Uh, else if. Uh, I'm missing some syntax here. I think it's there we go. Else if. Ugh, I'm coming from a Python world. Apologies. So else if total bill is less than 125 and total bill is greater than 115. On log, hey, just right. Tip was just right. In order to change this back to 20%. And I'm gonna show you how to make this easier in the future because we're changing my tip up quite a bit. We're gonna toss this all into a function later on so it's easier for us to toss in variables, but I'm gonna change this. And hey, the tip was just right. Cool, so we've got this sort of if, else, if, and then finally I'm gonna to toss in this else. And again, we're gonna have this open parenthesis, and this is a final uh, statement. So if total bill is greater than 125. I don't really have to put in an else, I can't do this anyway, so I'm gonna show you what happens when we do this. This is going to be a problem, and you can already see it's a problem because we have this red line here. There's sort of a inbuilt check that the editor knows that else should not have a condition. Else is the final statement in this logic train. But I'm going to put this in anyway, just so we can see the error. Console log tip was too much. So now we're going to come back here. We're going to refresh. And oh, syntax error, unexpected token at this squirrely bracket at line 57. So if I come back to line 57, okay, it's telling me unexpected token. So let me just get rid of the unexpected token. That would be the logical thing. All right, now I've got another red one there. So we'll refresh and go here, and unexpected token. All right, so let's get rid of this token. All right, see what happens. And we're gonna come back here and we're gonna refresh. And oh, wait a minute, what the tip was just right and tip was too much. Something is going on here. This this is not right. I don't want both. I just want one. Inside of this logic, having a condition for the else is incorrect. So what we want to do is have the else and then done. And now we're going to change this total bill to, let's say, 30%, which I think should take us well over the 125 mark. If my math is correct, 30% of 100 is 130 and we are over our 125. I'm gonna come back here and show you what all this stuff means in the else if, but I just wanna cover the basics real quick. So tip was too much. All right, let's rewind and kind of go over like, what are we doing here? What just happened? We know it works. We know if I type in 10% here and save it, I should get a tip was too little. And then if I type in 20% here, I'll get a tip was just right. And if I type in 30% here, I'm gonna get a tip was too much. All right, so we've got all three of those working. This isn't great, it's not good programming, but we're working through the functionality of what's happening here. Now in this option or in this example, else if, oh, this is crazy logic. If then is what I want. So in programming, they do this if else thing. So they don't really follow standard English, they try to, but if this, then that, no, if this, else, that. Weird. But if this, else, that, well, if this, else, if, that, I can have multiple conditions within here. So if I want to break this down even further, I can stick in multiple else, ifs in here. So if it's less than, let's say, 125, and let's just say 120. And this one is 120 to 118, let's just say. And this one is 118 to 115. So there we go. So I can break it down into those components. And we can have our variation within here. We can have multiple else if statements, no problem. So I'm gonna get rid of these for now and just comment them out because we're not gonna need them. 
But in here, I have an ampersand statement. This is an and. I want both of these conditions to be met. Now, if I didn't want both of these conditions to be met, I would type in a pipe symbol, two pipes in a row, and that way I get an or. Now, this one doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So if I type in here, uh, if my bill was less than 125 or my bill is greater than 115, in either one of these cases, print this message. So let's just see what happens with a 20% tip. And I'll refresh and tip was just right. Okay, cool, expected. Now let's do it with a 30% tip. Uh, okay. Let's do this, and tip was just right. Wait a minute, I'll do it with a 40% tip. And tip was just right. Why? Because in all these cases, every one of them matches this second half parameter. Total bill is greater than 115. Of course it's greater than 115, so this is gonna match. But if I bring this back to and, not or, but and, now we're gonna get a different message. And tip was too much. So that is a very important distinction to make between and and or, and will match this condition and this condition, or will only match one of the two. Now that might not be important for now, but I just want to call it out. If that's something of importance to you that you want to know, cool. Now we're going to add in one more element and we're going to talk about this equals operator because JavaScript is very annoying. Um, I'm just going to breeze through it real quick. You, if you're, Getting into JavaScript, this is, might be a point of frustration, but if total bill equals equals 120 print or console.log, sorry, uh, bill was equal to 120. Now, this is really weird, but I'm going to type this and tip was just right. Why? Ah, cool. So right here, we're not equal to 120 until we change this up to 20%. So I'm going to change the my tip to 20% and save that and come back in and we get this bill is equal to 120. Okay, cool. So what if we change this up to a string? All right, refresh. And I still get bill was equal to 120. Well, I mean, logically, yeah, it, it makes sense. Total bill equals 120. That, that totally makes sense. What if I stick in an extra equal sign in here? Let's just see what happens. And hey, wait a minute, it went away. Why did it go away? What's going on here? Let me get rid of the colons or the quotes. And I'll just go 120. Okay. Refresh, now bill equals 120. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? What's, what's going on? We have these three equals, two equals. All right, total bill 120. Gotcha. It works. It's there. I saved it. It refreshed it. I turn this into what is known as a string. Somehow a number and a string match each other in this double equal thing. Wait, if I stick in an extra equal though, this is a string and I refresh. Whoa, it disappears. What it is, this doesn't make sense. So double equals. in JavaScript means a loose equality. So whether it's number or string, let's say number or a string, it will still match. Okay. Triple equals is a strict equality number and string will not match. So I wanted to make that just kind of uh, distinction so you're aware. Okay, we're gonna move on. I spent a lot of time with variables, if else statements. We're gonna start moving into what are called functions. Uh, so today you saw me changing around this number a lot, like going up and changing it over and over. So we're gonna make a more efficient way and we're gonna toss this all into a function. All right, so what is a function? So what is a function? A 
a way to do a task or call a task. You do the same thing over and over. If you had a robot at home, you would have a function called do laundry. Every time you do the laundry, it gathers up the clothes, tosses it in the machine, puts in the soap, waits for it to be done, hangs it on the dryer, or if you have a dryer, and then folds the laundry, puts it away. The function, the task never changes. It's the same exact thing every time. So you can either schedule the function or just call the function. In JavaScript, today we're going to learn how to call the function. Scheduling is something done on the back end of the time. But we're going to call the function. And so in here, we're going to call the function do laundry. And the way we're going to do it is function do laundry. And the way we define it is through this method. So very similar to our if syntax, if open parenthesis, open bracket, close bracket. So same exact thing, function, open parenthesis, anything you want to stick inside, not mandatory, but we're going to say console.log. I'm doing laundry. Oh, I do want to point out the quotes. So uh, real quick, these are double quotes. And inside here, I can use single quotes. Uh, so I can print it like this. The reason I'm bringing this up, it does get annoying. When to use single quotes, when to use double quotes. So when we're doing this, and I, I probably should have used double quotes up here to be consistent, but I apologize. Uh, but up to you. Now, if I'm using double quotes, I can get away with this single quote. I am turns into I'm doing laundry. It's not the English that's important. It's this sort of single parenthesis here. If I change the double quote to a single quote, you're going to see the syntax change. And let's run this and just see what happens. It's going to throw an error. And it's going to say, missing close parenthesis after argument list. Ugh, this is a terrible error. Tell me I'm using the incorrect quote. So that's where the visual editor comes in. And it's like, OK, I see what's going on. I'm using the incorrect quotes here. So if I change these up, I can do this. Now, I think, and probably I got to play around with this, I think you can even do this. This is syntactically correct. Grammatically, English-wise, like typing it this way is probably not correct. So probably not a good idea to do it this way. Um, just because that double quote inside the conjunction or the this I am doesn't really work too well. Uh, so let's do this. And that looks better. I cringe if I saw double quotes between the I and the am and I'm. All right, so wait, why I, I, I save this and uh, I refresh. Nothing is coming up. Why why is it not saying I'm doing laundry? Where's my where's my robot doing laundry? It's not doing laundry. Well, that's because we need to tell the robot, tell the function to run. And in here, the way we do it is do laundry, open, close, parenthesis. That's it. All right. So now when we run it, hey, I'm doing laundry. Cool. We just ran the function, do laundry, console.log, I'm doing laundry, done. Cool. So now we've run our first function. So how do we take in all of this and put it into a function. Well, let's start off with my math function. Let's start off with uh, tip calculator. So we'll start off with function and we'll start off with tip calculator. And inside of here, I'm not gonna toss in anything at all, but I know I want my output to be those three things. I know I want the output to be this thing, console.log, if tip was too much, if total bill. So I know I want this as the output. So let's stick the output in here and then we can work backwards from there. All right. Uh, if you've come from another programming language, uh, the spaces indentation is not as important in JavaScript. So that might be a relief or that might be a hair pulling moment. I don't know. So the indentation in here is not as uh, critical as it is in, let's say, Python, which is a very indentation uh, heavy language, um, hierarchy structure based. So here it's not as important. So if I just do this and I just run uh, function tip calculator, let's just go 
uh, tip calculator. Now, this is going to work. This shouldn't throw an error. I would be surprised if it throws an error. That's correct. It didn't throw an error because total bill is already defined up here. We've, we've defined it. So this is a really interesting problem. Inside of our file, we've got a variable up here, but we've also got the same variable down here. So it's taking this global variable and applying it to these local function variables. So there's a concept called scope. And if you're lost right now, tell me to slow down. I'm gonna try to break this down as simple as possible, but this is very confusing right from the jump. So feel free to pop in the chat, any questions you have, or uh, just raise your hand or ask, unmute yourself and ask. Um, but the idea here is inside of this function, there are variables. And if it cannot find the variable inside the function, it will call the global variable. Be careful. The best idea is to not use the same name. So I'm going to use a different name inside of this function. And I'm going to call this one uh, total bill, total function bill. Let's just call it that. And so I'm going to change all of these. And if you want a shortcut to change all of these, it is command D. And that'll be able to highlight all of these. And we'll call this total function bill. We don't have a variable today with the name total function bill. And so when I run this again, now we're going to have a, hey, uncaught reference error. Total function bill is not defined. Sweet. Awesome. Good to know. Now we're on the right track. We are calling this function correctly. This is good news. OK, so inside my tip calculator, I've got to toss in this idea of a total function bill. So how do I do that? Well, inside my tip calculator or inside here, how do we calculate our total function bill? Well, if we go up, we had these variables in here. And so I'm going to copy. And I'm going to stick these in here. Why am I putting in all three of these in here? Well, if I just did total function bill, like total bill, total function bill, well, I have my bill and my tip. Well, I don't, where does my bill and my tip come from? Why don't we need those? Yeah, so we can copy them from here. So we've got my bill and my tip. And we're going to change these to my function bill. Whoa, what did I just do? Uh, there we go. Toss that in and we're good to go. Did I? Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Okay, so we're going to change this to instead of my bill, we're going to call this my function bill. So my function bill. And why am I changing the name? Because again, if we use my tip from here, it'll take it from the global my tip. I want to have a different variable name. I can just as well call this A and B if I wanted to, but I kind of want to have some coherence. So my function, okay. all right, cool. So I've got my function bill, which is $100, my function tip, which is 20%, my total function bill, function bill, and our math is correct. Okay, cool, let's do this. And let's just see what we get. And boom, we get nothing. We get absolutely no output. Why? Why are we not getting any output? I've run the tip calculator. Uh, I'm running this function and, oh, wait a minute. I am getting an output. Hey, wait a second. Uh, 97, line 97. And it's running this one. Hey, tip was just right. Okay, cool. So this works. Maybe not the way I want it to work, but it's working. Now we've got these two variables up here. And I want to change these two. So I'm also, I'm also noticing a problem. I want to change these two back to their ampersand. But I want to be able to make these dynamic. What if my bill is 1,000? What if my bill is, I want to leave a 50% tip? What if my bill is $5 and I want to leave a 5% tip? Like whatever it is. So how about I add these in? Well, I can add them in up here. And the way I'm going to add them in is by signing, just tying, yeah, typing in my function bill and my function tip. And I'm going to get rid of these two. I'm going to blow these two away, 
comment them out, doesn't matter. And now we're gonna run this again and just see what the error we get. Hey, tip was too much. Wait a second, why? Uh, tip was too much because I didn't match here, I didn't match here, I'm gonna match here. This is my default, doesn't matter at all. It doesn't have to be above or below or anything. This is just a worst case scenario. Now, if I wanna add in values, I can add in my 100 and I can add in my 0 0.20. And now this message should change to tip was just right. Okay, what just happened? So what we did was take in our output, desired output that we want, which is just this console log thing. And then we added in our function, which are our math at the top, which was total bill times the one plus tip. And we got our total, uh, total bill. So our total bill, then we ran up against these if else statements and we got an output. And what I'm doing in tip calculator in this function is passing in a value of 100 and passing in a value of 20%. How do I know the order? I really kind of don't unless I look at the function. The function will tell me what the order will be and how the variables will be used. So the tip calculator, my function bill will be the first value and then my function tip. If I flip these around, 0 0.20 and 100. Well, then let's see what happens. And hey, too little of a tip. How do I know what the tip amount was? So I can just add in total function bill and I can add in total function bill. And I can add in total function bill down here. So I can just have the output be total function bill. And we can do a return and I get this tip of $20.20. What the, why? Because it's a 20 cent bill with a thousand percent or 10,000 percent tip. Uh, so that's how I get to $20, a thousand percent, I think. So that's how I get to $20. So I want to go back to this $100. Or maybe I want to make this $1,500 with a 10 percent tip. And I'll still get that value of tip was too much because, uh, wait a minute. Oh, I screwed that up. That number looked wrong. I was like, wait a second, total function bill. That looks better, 1650. So why am I getting uh, the else statement here? Because our constraints are really just around hard numbers, 115, 125, 115. But these aren't the major thing. The major thing to kind of take away is there's a function here and we wanna pass in variables. I'm gonna delete all of this because I know this is really, really complicated to remember. The reason I'm gonna delete it is because I wanna get used to that feeling of blowing things away and then redoing them, seeing how we got to where we are. And so again, I'm gonna do this whole thing called function and I'm gonna call it tip calculator. And we're going to have an open parenthesis and an open bracket. And then we're going to call the function tip calculator. That's all we're going to do. We're going to refresh here and our output goes away. We still have our I'm doing laundry and all that. But in here, I'm going to take the if else statements that we had above. We're going to paste them back in here. And the reason I do this is just so we can get used to uh, seeing the code and the derivation of the code, the logic, how we would build our own programming algorithm if we wanted to, and what goes into that. So here we have our if, else, and else, or else if and else. Um, we're gonna change the total bill variable because we know we're inside of a function and we know we grab total bill from up here. We can also delete all of this, but I don't wanna delete all of it. Actually, let me do this. Let's just, comment out total bill and all of this. So if I comment all of this out, uh, then there we go. So commenting out, uh, then I refresh this. There we go. Reference error total bill is not defined. What I really want to do is just show you inside the code that if I comment all this stuff up here, then total bill won't be defined. And this is the generate, I wanted to generate this particular error. So now we know total bill isn't defined, so we want to define total bill. So bar uh, total bill. Now you will get sticklers who say, well, inside of a function, you really need to use the variable let. 
All right. So they're not wrong. So JavaScript has this really weird concept. I'm going to go off on a tangent. Three variable types in JavaScript. We have the let used inside of a function or class. We have the var, which is used globally. Now, the unique thing with let and var can be changed. There's a third variable. So I've only mentioned two, let and var. There is what is called the const, short for constant, meaning cannot be changed. So that one we have not come across yet, but I will cover that one shortly because it is an incredibly important function. So. Yeah, Rashid. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I was just uh, asking that suppose we were to use var instead of let and var will have it will be defined inside the function itself right so does it make any difference to use let or var inside a function yeah so if i define let inside the function then i won't be able to use it outside however if i use var inside the function then it is very possible that i can use it outside the function so if i just do var total build 20 and let's just make sure we don't have any errors pool. Uh, and I come here, I've commented out total bill up top. There is a possibility that I can use, if I do a console.log total bill, then there's a possibility I will see total bill outside the function, but depends, it may or may not. Um, so here, clearly it doesn't work um, with let, uh, it probably won't work either. So. There used to be this case where var inside the function used to be usable outside. Clearly that's not the case, but this is an older um, rule of thumb that we followed. So the general practice is to use let, but you can obviously use var. It's just not recommended inside of a function. Okay, okay. Um, when you get to classes, so when we start looking at classes, Inside the class, you are still going to have the, um, the you still have the var let rules. And so when we look at a class, let's say, and I have this class of uh, tip calculator. Let me change that. I don't think it's something I will have time to demonstrate today, but in this class, uh, oops. Uh, why can I not? There we go. Inside here, we might have a var equals total bill or var total bill. And we'll have to pop this in a constructor and all that. But for the most part, if it's inside of a class, then it still holds that global true inside the class. And so it's possible if you want to use that same variable somewhere else and you don't want to reference that variable, um, you would have a problem. So let would be something that you would use inside of a class as well as uh, inside of a function. So it's recommended to use let inside the scope of a function. Don't have to, but it's recommended. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we've got a uh, good question, by the way. Um, so now we've got our total bill in here and we're going to now uh, pop in that function, uh, the, uh, the formula. So it's my bill plus or times one plus my tip. Now, where does my tip come from and where did my bill come from? So if I save this again and run it, well, we're gonna have a problem. My bill is not defined inside of the tip calculator at these lines. So I can pass in my bill and my tip. And the way I would do that is define them up here inside of the tip calculator parentheses. So my bill and my tip. And let's just refresh this and see what we get. We get nothing. Okay, interesting. Actually, sorry, tip was too much. We got it. We got something. Uh, tip was too much. And why was it too much? Because total bill 
we don't really have an output for total bill. So let's just see what the output for total bill was. And let's just refresh and run this. And we get NAN. Ooh, what is NAN? It's not available number or not available value. Doesn't have, it's like a null value in JavaScript. So when you see NAN, the, uh, the variable is basically empty. So this is an empty variable. Why is it empty? Because I never defined what my bill is. I never defined what my tip is. And yet I'm using undefined variable here and I'm using an undefined variable here. And so total bill will be undefined. So let's fix that. Let's kick in 100 and 0 0.20. Cool. And now we should be, tip was just right. Cool. And we have this value here. Now, probably want to fix these to the ampersand. And we'll go down here and just add in total bill. And up here, total bill. All right. Cool. All right. So now we're going to try to convert this over to that third variable, which is a const. And a const is very complicated and confusing, but just remember it is something that cannot be changed, but yet it is something that can hold quite a bit of information. And const will come up over and over and over again in the React world as a standard nomenclature way of executing functions or typing out functions. And so, Let's do uh, const. Let's just do a, I'm going to introduce an array variable. So my array, you'll see this not in the beginning of JavaScript, but you'll see it more towards um, intermediate JavaScript, especially when we get to blog posts or filtering through a, a few different items, what we want to do. And so a list is basically a way to store data. So here in this list, I have one, two, three, I also have A, and then I can have B, and I can have C. So I can store multiple different types of data in an array. And we haven't talked about arrays yet, but I do want to introduce the idea of them because they are incredibly important. And I'm going to console, I'm going to um, comment out this tip calculator. Actually, it doesn't mean that, I'll leave it. And so we've got this array. And we have this number six next to it, and we can expand this. And then we see a whole bunch of information, the zeroth value, the first value, the second value, the third, fourth, and fifth value. Wait a minute, you're telling me there's six values. Why are you starting with zero? Shouldn't you start with one? All programming starts with zero, hands down. Every position will always start with zero. Something very confusing to wrap your head around. But if I'm asking, give me the third value in this list, the third value you would logic think is the number three. No, the third value is A, because we go zero, one, two, and three. And so if I want the sixth value in here, well, there is no sixth value. We'll get an empty string. So how do I access these values? And it's called indexing. So we're going to look at arrays and indexing. So this is a concept I'm gonna go over briefly, but if I wanna access the first value in the array, what number is gonna come out? The number two. Well, I want the first element. So I typed in number one, that's my first element. Sorry, it's zero is your first element. So the zero with element is your first element, something that you might get, you have to get used to, but just remember in all languages, doesn't matter if it's C, doesn't matter if it's PHP, doesn't matter if it's Python, doesn't matter if it's Java, it doesn't matter, whatever, it's zero if, is your first index. Now beyond that, if I wanna get the sixth value, wait a minute, there should be six, I should get C, right? So if I print this out, I'm gonna get undefined. Oh, wait a minute, why? Because there is no zero, one, two, three, four, five, six doesn't exist. My array value six would mean there's seven total values in this array, which is not true. There are only six values in the array. And now I get the letter C. So hopefully that makes sense with indexing. What I mean by the value can't change. So const, uh, sorry, my array, I've defined it equals I'm going to make up another array, 100, 200, 300. And we're going to run this again. And whoa, assignment to a constant variable. That is not possible. That is why we get an error. If I have the same thing set up as a bar, 
I'm going to copy this and change it to a var. And actually, let's do it underneath. And we are going to comment this one out and make this one a var. And we're going to refresh. And I get no error. Why? Because a var, I can change all day long. So up top, var can be changed. Let can be changed. Const, short for constant, cannot be changed. So I want to hammer this point home because it is going to be such a point of annoyance in the future that we are going to use a lot of consts, but they cannot be changed. So if you want to change them, you've got to extract the variable, change the variable, and then you can reinsert into. We're not going to go over that today because it is a bit more involved, but I do want to cover the concept of a const because there's a few things to cover that would relate more to React directly. Um, I do want to introduce one last concept of dictionaries before we get into const creation with React, uh, but I'm going to create this idea of a const my dictionary, and dictionaries are a concept that will come up quite a bit. So in the arrays, we saw uh, cannot reassign a var. So in arrays, we have a open bracket notation. And this bracket is different than the squiggly bracket. That is what defines a list versus a dictionary. So in here, we have a open hard square bracket. Here we have an open closed squiggly bracket. There's a big difference between those two. Inside of a dictionary, there is generally just like a regular dictionary, you have a word and you have a definition. So you'll have a word here and then you'll have a definition. And that's exactly how a dictionary here works. So what's my word here? Uh, Let's just run this and just see what my dictionary pulls out. We console log, so I should probably console log this one. And refresh, and hey, definition is not defined. Cool. So we can't just do that. We have to do that, top and in quotes. And hey, we get word and then definition. So my Word is like a variable, but not quite, and the definition is what I want it to be. So another way to think of this is key value pair. So I have a key, and I have a value. And double quotes, single quotes. Generally, you want to use double quotes because in a dictionary, you are going to eventually run into JSON objects. Um, recommended to use double quotes because eventually you will run into JSON objects. JavaScript object notation which is finicky uh, and requires double quotes. So syntax notation in programming is so annoying, but it's, yeah, it, it is what it is. I don't like it, but yeah. So we have a key and a value. Now, how do I identify or access these? Uh, so in my dictionary, here's something very confusing. I'm going to use the open square bracket, and I'm going to type in the word word, and we'll see what happens. So hey, word is not defined. Got it. So let me pop this into double quotes, and we'll see what happens. And hey, we get definition. So this is really, really confusing on the syntax. I am not going to lie. This is terribly confusing. JavaScript, you can use this as an open word without any sort of parentheses. If you wanted to, you can kick it into a quote and then use it, and you'll still get the same exact response. But if you don't want to use these quotes, you don't have to. It's not great programming, but you don't have to. And you can still call it, but when you call it, you can't use this word. So my recommendation, just use double quotes on both sides and you will be much safer. It will make a lot more sense. So my dictionary word pulls up definition. My dictionary key pulls up 
value. That's how I access my individual values inside of a dictionary. Is this going to come up when we do our React? No, but it is something that I want to bring up because it is a very, very powerful thing that gets used quite a bit, especially when we start pulling with APIs and start pulling data from databases. JavaScript object notation is very finicky and you will live in dictionaries and go blind very quickly. Uh, so get used to this. Um, one thing that does happen quite a bit is nesting within a dictionary. So inside of this dictionary, you will have uh, another, uh, let's call it nested. And inside of here, there's our colon and we'll have a open bracket and we'll have key nested key and we'll have nested value. And so we can see uh, how we can pass loads of information very quickly. And so if I look at uh, nested in here and I refresh, now I have nested key, nested value. If I expand that, here's my key, here's my value. You might have noticed there's a sort of prototype thing down here. And we saw it below uh, before on the uh, console log of my array of this one. And I'm gonna go back and pop that out and just print out the array directly so we can compare these two. And so we've got our list here. This is a object type of array. JavaScript calls it an array. Python calls it a list. I've just grown up with Python, so I call it a list. Uh, but array and list are the same thing. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Uh, so if I expand prototype, like what are we doing? What is going on here? I don't understand any of this. Holy wow, this is crazy. All these are our different functions that we can access for my array. So if I type in my array dot length, uh, my array dot length and print this out again, I get a value of six. Okay, cool. So these are functions that I can access. I'm not going to go into them into great detail, but I do want to show that when you start drilling down and opening these up, this is going to get very confusing very quick. We can see that dictionaries don't have as many properties. Um, we can see different arguments we can call and the names of those. We can see what the return values might be and we can definitely see what the return values of those are. So you can go down this rabbit hole because What's happening is this is a function. It has properties. Inside of here, it is a prototype of a, another function which has properties. So I'm gonna go down into the constructor function and it has its own prototype of properties. So I'm gonna keep going down into the properties of each different function and object until I get down to the original object where I don't have any more properties. And here are the original um, get prototype functions. So this can get really, really confusing really, really quickly. What I'm going to recommend is in the beginning, if you're not used to this, I would say, don't worry about what's happening in the prototype. Just stay within this first, these first two levels at the moment. I wouldn't recommend going down below this anymore. Um, so if you do get curious and you do want to go down the rabbit hole and you want to try to understand, there's plenty of places to go, Stack Overflow being one of them. Um, but that's what I would recommend at the moment. And if I haven't mentioned Stack Overflow yet, uh, I would recommend coming to Stack Overflow and just browsing all the questions. You can ask whatever you want here. Um, it's a great reference for any programming language, more than likely in the very beginning, all your questions have probably been asked. And so you can come in here and type in, what is all the stuff uh, in the browser? or JavaScript prototype. And we'll see, if, uh, why is nothing coming up? Maybe I asked a question that just doesn't exist. There we go. Um, and you'll find a whole bunch of questions that have been asked in regards to the keywords that have been typed in. I'm not gonna go looking for the exact question, but you get the idea that this is pretty much um, an open community where you can get a lot of help and actual code to solve your problems, whatever they might be. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the actual 
uh, code that we're going to run directly from sort of a uh, a file and what that'll look like. So we're going to switch gears. Um, so we're going to ink create a file called uh, sample JS, or maybe we'll call it first JS file dot js and it is very important to have that dot js doesn't matter what you use here but i'm going to call it first js file dot js making it very obvious and underneath the script i'm going to copy all of the stuff that we did underneath the script tag so everything between the script not the actual script tag but everything in between i'm going to copy through okay cool so i've copied everything between the script tag and i'm going to save this and i'm going to do something inside here called terminal i'm going to open a new terminal and inside that new terminal, it opens us up right to this folder. And inside of this folder, I'm just going to type in, let me expand this and make it bigger. And that's probably, hopefully, big enough. And I'm going to type in Node. If you don't have a Node installed yet, I would highly recommend downloading it and installing it if you have an older version. Uh, I don't remember if this is the latest version or not. There probably is a version higher than this, but like 24 or something. I might be in an older version, but uh, Node. Uh, anything above, I think 16, you're fine. Or 12, I think you're fine. Every computer even runs that. But um, node, and then the name of the file. So first JS file, we run that. And we get a very similar output to what we got in the browser. So what this means, we don't get all the little fancy expansions that we can get in the browser. But what this really means is this node thing is loaded in the browser already. Like every browser, Java, like Chrome, Mozilla, Safari, Edge, whatever, comes with a JavaScript interpreter. It can understand JavaScript and output its values. If we don't want to run this and we want to use JavaScript as a traditional programming language, we can definitely do that as well. And this is JavaScript being used as a traditional programming language. If you're coming from Python, the way you would run a Python file is very much like Python, python.py, file.py. It's the same exact thing. Here we have node as our interpreter and first file JS, file.js. There's a lot of JSs in there, but you get the idea of node and Python. And therefore we have this sort of uh, compatibility between, not compatibility, but similarity between Node.js and Python and probably most all other programming languages that don't have a compiler, but have an interpreter. So these are interpreted languages, not compiled languages. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. It's OK. So for today, what I'm going to do is point us to the code base we have been using uh, inside GitHub. And let's go to, let me see if I can find, uh, there we go. Uh, not spot skills, but we've been using that CSS cheat sheet quite a bit. So what I did was turned this into a React project. And I'm going to start to go over what some of the code in there looks like. So what we're going to emulate is this HTML page. We're going to emulate it into a React project. And I've gone ahead and done it already. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the GitHub link to this particular one is just the web page itself. Uh, wrong one. This one is just the GitHub web pages, pages.io. So share that out. There you go. It's also in the meetup link as well. So you'll be able to have access to it. And then the GitHub source repository for all this stuff is here inside of uh, these repositories. But it will make more sense if I share the actual spot skills. So this repo or this repo is not for uh, this page, but rather for this one. So here's the whole course. Um, if you want the GitHub repo for that, that is this one. The GitHub repo for the cheat sheet is, right, God, this thing is so annoying. Zoom takes up way too many weird places, uh, would be CSS cheat sheet react. So I'll share that one as well. So here's the CSS cheat sheet react. And here is the GitHub repo for this one. What we're going to do is we're gonna peruse the code and we're going to look at it and just get an idea. Maybe hopefully today we've seen enough variables where we can see what's going on and maybe make some sense of it. But inside of the source folder, and I know today if you've never learned React, if you've never seen React, this is not going to make any sense. And you'll be like, what am I looking at? This is ridiculous. I don't know what's going on. It's OK. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to talk you through it. 
we're going to go to this app JS thing. And we saw, hey, wait a minute, this function app thing looks kind of familiar. Wait, I've seen that before. Where have I seen that function app thing before? I've seen that function app thing up here. Here's function tip calculator. Oh, it's not tip calculator, but it's app. And this variable thing looks the same. Okay, so the syntax up here, at least on this line is the same. So I know this is a function that I've got to call some way, somehow. Maybe I can see, oh, export default app. That doesn't make any sense to me, but I do know that we've been looking at index as a very common keyword inside of HTML world or inside of React, or inside of, sorry, HTML world. So index is a very, very common word. Can I go to index.js and see what's going on? Hey, there's my app. I don't know how this works yet, but I'm apparently importing app from dot slash app, okay. This is really complicated, but I found my app. This makes no sense to me, but I can go back to my app and see, okay, there's at least some code that makes sense. Okay, now inside of here, however, hopefully this does make sense. We've got a app name and we've got some code and we've got some stuff going on here and we can see there's divs, there's p tags, there's images, there's logos, all this stuff is going on. This is pretty standard. I know what all this stuff is. Um, I'm also wondering, wait a minute, I uploaded, sorry, different, well, oh, I uploaded the wrong code, son of a, okay, I uploaded a basic project. I thought I'd uploaded my React cheat sheet project. So I was like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Um, I'm missing my component folders. I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. You can ignore this because I think I uploaded the wrong thing at the wrong time to this. Um, but to get to some actual code, which I, yeah, I'll jump back and uh, find this item. We'll go to spot skills. That'll have actual code and you'll be able to see that one. So I'm going to go to spot skills and we'll look at that one. Apologies, I'll fix the cheat sheet thing. Um, we'll go to source directory again. And inside here, that looks better. There's assets, there's components. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So if I look at the app JS in here, now we'll see, okay, there's the function app and then there's a whole bunch of stuff. But I do see this div, which we covered. And then I see a whole bunch of stuff like this. I don't get what any of this stuff means. I don't need to really know, but I'm gonna dive into components and I'm gonna look at just home, for instance, and just see what the home JS looks like. So in home JS, this is kind of what I want to get to is I've got these divs and these class names and these things. So it looks kind of HTML-ish. The thing that I really want to show is the power of the export and the const and the home and this thing. If you've ever looked at Python, um, this is what a Lambda function might be called. But in JavaScript, this is very, very, very funky and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I want to go back to the index.html. And inside of here, we're going to type in something a little funky, which doesn't make any sense. But it will be a const my tip calculator, or maybe uh, const tip calculator equals blank arrow function and a function. And then I'm gonna call in a const tip calculator. This is very, very weird syntax. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But when I come back to my document and I refresh here, uh, I don't really see anything. So what I'm gonna do is copy all the stuff that we did inside of our, I'm gonna make this bigger so I can see what's going on a little bit better. I'm gonna copy all of this and paste it into the const tip calculator. And we are going to see what the output will be. There we go. So now I actually have some stuff in here. So save it and refresh it. And hey, my bill is not defined. Cool. All right. So I don't think we got that before in our function before. What we got was N-A-N. So if I come back up here and get rid of my tip, my bill isn't defined. And I got rid of these two. Actually, I take that back. I think in here we did have my bill. And yeah, so let's see if tip calculator actually works. And okay, cool, that works. So there we go. Uh, so we got my bill is not defined here. So let's define my bill and my tip inside the const tip calculator. My bill and my tip. And save that and run it again. And tip was too much. We still get that same NAN. So it's acting exactly like the function that we had before. 
So constip calculator, oh, I'm gonna decrease the font. This is getting a little too, too much real estate. So in here, I can add in my bill, which is 100 and 0 0.20 for the tip, 20% tip, and run this again. And there we go. We got the tip was just right, the same exact output as we got from the function above. So now we see that this function works identically to a const with this type of syntax. There is no difference between the two. Absolutely no difference. Some people will have a preference to run a function based because they like this syntax. Others will run a const based because they like this syntax. There's only a level of sort of internal, uh, I guess, satisfaction, meaning using the word const gives people some more internal comfort because it is a constant. And by the rules of JavaScript, it cannot be changed. Maybe that level of faith isn't the same in a function. Maybe there's ways to manipulate a function that they think might be out there, but um, you'll see inside of most code, you'll see this const and then a variable. We're gonna talk about exports, we're gonna talk about returns, we're gonna talk about all this stuff later on at a later date, but I really just wanted to expose this idea of, hey, this is gonna come up a lot and it is very funky, but it is no different than what we did with a regular function. And you will see regular, excuse me, regular functions in code as well. Um, so I think that's kind of where I wanna take a, a break and pause for today. I know we covered quite a bit. We started off with the boring old console logs, which is a way to do error troubleshooting that doesn't appear on the web page. Um, we did variables, really, really basic, A's and B's. Um, we introduced the idea of um, math in parentheses and how those have an impact. And then we looked at individual variables um, outside of the scope of any type of function, looked at variables inside of the scope of a function, and then we took that a little bit further and went into consts. We did take a detour and looked at arrays and dictionaries and looked at the annoyances of both, but I really just wanted to focus on get you to be able to understand this particular syntax because it is gonna come up quite a bit. We have not gotten into returns. That's a whole different world. Um, but I'm going to pause there and just ask if there's any questions before we jump into next week's first React component and React introduction. I don't have any specific questions, but I, I just want to say it was a very nice session, especially because uh, you are able to go through the whole general things in a very limited time. Also, the pace was much right for me. It was just right for me. For sincerely, if there is some lag or some fastness, I would just <laughs> let go. But your pace was just too right for me. And I just want to thank for the your session. My pleasure. Thank you for joining. This was great. Um, so hopefully you'll join us next week when we dive into React. Yeah, sure. And is there any social profile of yours you to follow you? Uh, right now, I don't really have like anything to... at the moment, but I probably should create something. Um, right now, this is the first iteration of this course, and so this course will always be free. Um, in the future, there will be other courses like the whole entire full stack in 12 weeks, and then there'll be data sciences courses, but those will be paid courses. So this one is to get used to my style of teaching, what I cover, and how I cover it. So these 12 weeks will always remain free. And as a part of that, I'll probably create a profile, a much bigger web page. But for now, feel free to um, reference just these sites. And if you want to reach out and provide your contact info, um, I think Facebook, we have something. But honestly, I should be a lot better at this stuff. So um, I wish I was better at like social media, but I am not as well as I'd like to be. Um, so if you're looking to volunteer and help me uh, on the social media, please do, and I will definitely uh, take your help. Um, so right now we have a spot skills page. Clearly there's not a whole lot going on, um, but uh, if you'd like to assist and give us some um, help, always looking for volunteers. Um, I can't say it'd be a paid position, but if you'd like to help, be much appreciated. So, all right, uh, but yeah, with that, I think we are done for the day. If there's anything specific that you want to see in the future um, that's part of React, 
let me know uh, via Meetup and we can work something out to figure out how to incorporate that into the course. Oh. But yeah, I'll post this up on YouTube and share the link in the Meetup as well. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening or day, wherever you may be. Bye. Bye.